Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And today we are going to talk about what the heck is a Blender Apps. Now, Blender Apps is uh, a proposal, I suppose you could say, or a future development of Blender to allow you to use Blender as the host for your own applications. Uh, right now, some of this technology already exists. And in this blog post, they talk about how it's going to be implemented going forward. So first, we're going to do hands on with how it already exists and it exists in the form of app templates. So this is from uh, Blender Studios. This is built on Blender. So you see up here, Blender logo is running. This is ultimately an app template, but it's the same kind of idea. This is an application built on top of Blender. Now, the way this was done is you've got a blend file to specify how you want the UI to be laid out. You get various different tools from Blender are built in here. So you'll recognize, you know, the filtering tools here and so on, the, the image viewing tools, the file sorting tools, they're all being kind of brought together to create this uh, simple image viewer. Again, you use arrow keys to navigate between the files and you can just sort of flip between all of the various various different things. So this is, again, a number of the um, thumbnails I've done for this channel in the past. And that's what it is. It's basically a simple image viewer built on top of Blender itself. So if you're working with stuff and you want to create applications that use things that Blender does, 3D model viewing, texturing, uh, image viewing, video editing, that kind of stuff, well, you can actually now basically build these custom experiences that either ship as like a, an extended Blend file or as a uh, version with the Blender executables embedded in them. So basically it's turning Blender into a development environment. By the way, you could go ahead and check this image viewer out. Uh, also, if you are interested in seeing how these things are implemented, it is open source. So ultimately, this is going to be a little bit different when Blend Apps is actually a thing, uh, but you're going to notice this one uses templates. So you've got these uh, Blend files here that ultimately um, again, are for configuring the user interface, for showing people what they would see, a customized UI layout. If you're not familiar with Blender, the, the user interface is extremely customizable in terms of what you can do. So you can basically define the user interface that you wish to use, and then you use the uh, game logic here. Now, the uh, init underscore pi, you can think of that as the entry point, or this is basically main. Uh, this is the bootstrap loader for the code for handling things. As you can see, all of the logic of your application is implemented using uh, the Python programming language. Language. Uh, the code is pretty straightforward. The majority of the logic you're going to find here is actually in this ops here. And this is for handling things like, you know, displaying the uh, file things on screen, drawing the images, switching between things. And again, you're using the Python programming language to do all this stuff. The uh, API for the Blender um, SDK system it is very robust and you're basically going to use it like you would use say Windows APIs to draw something on screen but instead you use Blender instead of the operating system level stuff. So why would you do this? How are they going to implement that and all of those things? Well that is why we go back to the blog post. Uh, this was released last week on the developer portal. You can get a bit more details about how things are going to work. Uh, so what is a Blender app? Essentially it is an experience powered by Blender. So anything Blender can do uh, plus so much more of an extent Extended, designed to be portable and focused on specific usages. And that's the key thing. These are not plugins or extensions. You can still do that. So if you want to take Blender and make it something more, you'd use a plugin for that. This is for creating uh, experiences that would use some of the functionality of Blender, but in a very specific way. So if you need to provide your own UI and you don't want all of that tooling exposed, that's where Blender apps would come in. So a couple examples that they give here is as a uh, technical director, want to create a cross-platform solution, visualize everything from image sequences to videos, 3D files and then do annotations on top of that. You can combine Blender's video sequencer, their image editor, and their annotation tools, throw a UI on top of that, strip out the rest of the functionality you don't need from Blender, and add what you do on top. Uh, by the way, we looked at the app, app, uh, application template from Blender Studio. We'll get back to that in just a second. Or another example is you're an architect. You've got a project. You want the uh, your client to take a look at it, but you don't want them to actually have to use Blender itself. So what you do is you strip down Blender to basically just the 3D viewport. You make the navigation very simple. Maybe put it in fly mode, knock down the controls to basically just being the arrow keys, for example. And boom, you can distribute that out to them as a zip file. Uh, there are a couple of different ways. We'll get back to that when we talk about distribution of actually deploying a Blender app. Uh, but one of the big things is there's going to be this new Blend X uh, file description. Um, also, just like phones, they can be shipped as standalone without needing to have a Blender installed. Now, this is a little bit misleading because you're basically just bundling a version of Blender with your app. So your app just got, you know, 200 megabytes bigger. Uh, but they can all be bundled together. Also, do not take it from this to mean that you can run this on a phone. You're going to require a Blender-capable machine to run this. So you're going to only run this on desktops, for example, uh, until they ever port 
port to, uh, I, and I don't know why there is not a mobile version of Blender as of yet, uh, but as it stands right now, this will only run on desktop platforms where Blender itself will run. Uh, but you, you don't need to necessarily have Blender installed on the person's machine you're shipping it to. You can do a special version of it uh, that they just run it and, and it's like an application to them. So how do you create it? Well, this is sort of a proposal at this point in time. So uh, a template will be provided, doesn't exist yet, but it will be provided. Um, but at this point in time, you can use the template approach like what we saw with the studio app we just looked at earlier on and kind of get started because the, the, the authoring logic is going to stay the same. Another interesting thing about this is they're going to be looking at making a app development mode for Blender where it watches the folder, reflects any changes, basically hot reloads or live reloads of any changes you make and so on. Uh, so eventually Blender should have a development mode that will make it um, you know, easier and faster to do these kind of developments inside of Blender itself. Uh, and you should be able to edit your files in whatever ID you wish. Also coming in the future, there will be boilerplate templates for doing certain things, drag and drop, window management, etc., without having to do everything yourself. So you're going to see uh, a development mode of Blender to support Blend app development, and then you're also going to see templates coming. Uh, in terms of running it, so ultimately, uh, and regular blend files, a new extension is being introduced, Blend X. Have a dedicated extended, uh, a dedicated extension makes it so that Blender can run its contents in a run app mode. So a special version of Blender that reads in the configs and just runs what it sees as the Blend X file. Uh, you can have a dedicated icon, so um, Blender could use it to detect when dragged onto, and it'll be recognized as the operating system as a Blender file. So there are two ways to run a Blender app: a single file app. So the simplest way of running will be distribute packed as a single file, build everything into a Blend X file, or, or do a bundle. So so um, without the need of having Blender installed, this is sort of like what you do now if you're doing like, HTML5 development and you're you know shipping a version of like a, basically a browser host window in it. Uh, so this bundle will be an EXE uh, that inside of it will have the BlendX file, a special version of Blender for running and hosting the BlendX file. So if you want to have you know applications that you can distribute that you have the end user has no idea that they're essentially uh, Blender applications or that they don't need to have Blender installed, uh, you'll take the bundle approach. So those are the two options. This is going to be actually kind of cool because if you're in the existing Blender ecosystem, we'll be able to just distribute BlendX files as tools and they'll run you know as standalone tools, but they'll host in the version of Blender that you happen to have installed, which is kind of neat. So this is built on top of, again, Blender 2.80's application templates, uh, which is sort of uh, where we were looking at. Again, they're going to be adding all these things on top of it, like they just discussed earlier on. You see a bit of a, a layout of how um, these app templates are used and installed. Um, so again, the distribu distribution of it is going to be a little bit different. It'll either be as a Blend X file going forward, all packed in together, so all your scripts and all that stuff will be bundled. So the, the startup Blend file for the UI definitions, uh, the init pi or the entry point, all the various different scripts, all of that stuff, you put them all together as a zip file, pack it in, call it a Blend X, and you can distribute it that way. Or you can bundle it, again, make a zip file, uh, bundle it in with a version of Blender and distribute this as an executable that the end user just treats as any other app. Uh, kind of an interesting approach. Now here is uh, the part where things kind of fall on their face for me at least. Um, the code here, so it inherits the same license as Blender, which is the GPL v2 license. Now GPL v2 license for software is great. That means if you're going to make changes to Blender, you need to make those changes publicly available. Now if you're making your own private tools, you may not actually like this idea. And in that particular case, uh, you're going to have to release your applications as GPL v2. And the, that would mean that the Python driving your app, basically, uh, as far as I could tell anyways, this code right here and all of the stuff in this directory, those all need to be GPL. That means that anybody can see your tools. So if you wanna create anything proprietary in this system, you are out of luck. So that is the downside of GPL. GPL is great for software, but for SDKs or libraries or frameworks, that's where it becomes very limiting for a number of people. So as long as you're okay with your source code being exposed, uh, there, that is kind of uh, one of those challenges you're going to have to be aware of. The GPL v2 license definitely has issues for many, many people. Now you see here your textures or shaders can be distributed under whatever license you wish. So you can do somewhat proprietary, but your source code, the actual script, as far as I can tell, will have to be GPL2. And again, that's going to be a huge deal breaker for a number of people. So that is the idea behind it. They're still getting proposals here. Basically, the, the nutshell here is it is going to turn Blender into a app development environment 
environment. With an app development mode, the ability to create these new Blend X files that you can ship off like executables that will have a version of Blender bundled into them or a standalone new extensions for people that already have Blender can run these little quick standalone tools that build upon the foundations of Blender. Uh, it's an interesting topic for sure. Um, also earlier on, I mentioned all the various different tools that were here. Uh, we do have the media viewer. That's what we saw in action. This is an implementation of application templates, but ultimately it is application templates that are going to evolve into um, Blender apps. So uh, you can still learn a lot from this is probably the best example you can get out there. Simple media viewer, again, just for looking at uh, 3D models, uh, uh, actually might not be 3D models, might only be uh, images and uh, videos uh, together and I think text files, etc. But it does give you an idea of what the capabilities are. By the way, this does require uh, Blender 3.0 or better. Uh, it is available in source code form. It's part of the Blender Studio tools. So it's available right here, this guy right there. So if you do want to go ahead and check it out, uh, this is probably the place to start. But ladies and gentlemen, that is Blender apps. Except Essentially, again, turning Blender into an app development kit where you're building on the foundations and the stuff that is available for Blender to create derived applications with their own user interfaces, own workflow, stripped down without all the other functionality in there. So again, it's not plugins. This is not for extending Blender. This is for creating solutions built on top of Blender. I'm curious, what do you think? Also, do you think that the GPL v2 license is going to be a hindrance to adoption? I think this is part of why the, their game engine never really took off. It's great for making sure that software stays open, but when it comes to development environments, open isn't always what people want. So I'm curious what you think. Let me know. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.